names are fascinating. I remember the time when we had to name our children. We got together a few name books together and we sifted through each name trying to discover what each name means. And while we held that baby girl in our hands, that full potential in our hands, we wanted to give her a name that would signify the desires of our hearts. So we named our daughter Leandra. And when my son was born, immediately because of many reasons, I chose to call him Matthew. And when my friends asked me why did I call my son Matthew, I simply say, well, I'm a New Testament preacher. And I'd like to start with the first book of the Bible in the hope that should I have other sons, I can call them Mark, Luke, and John, and in that order. But names in general are quite fascinating. When you travel to China and you hear some Chinese names that seem so difficult to pronounce, those are not alphabets and enunciations put together, but those names signify something deep. When you travel to India and hear unpronounceable names, it's not ordinary names, but it is names deep with meaning and significance. Some people choose to name their children after famous people. Some choose to name their children after movie stars. Some choose to name their children after biblical characters. But for whatever reason, we have our name. Our names signify who we really are. It is our name that gives us identity. And out of this identity, we hope our destiny would be formed. When we read the Bible, we discover a few names that were changed. For example, Saul. On the way to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, his name was changed from Saul to Paul. And that itself is a graduation for Saul. It would be a sad day if his name had to change from Paul to Saul, knowing what the two names signify. And as I was growing up as a young boy, if there was a one thing that I really did not like, it was to be called after my father's name. Because with that name, Charles, came some connotation that was not very good for me. My father was a drunkard. He was an alcoholic. So whenever his name was mentioned, it was assumed that I was not Paul, but I was Paul, the son of Charles, the alcoholic. So the name association with my father wanted me to change my name many times. There was one time when I did try to change my name, when I discovered that it was a long process and an expensive one, I decided not to change my name. But I've also discovered that when you come to Jesus, he, the Bible says he gives you a new name. He gives you a new identity. You see, your name links you up with your parents. Your name links you up with the ones who gave you birth. Your name links you up with the source of life. And as a little baby, your source of life in your mind is only your parents. And so while names are significant, they are significant simply because of who they attach us to. Our names are an extension of our parents' desires and their wishes for us. And names do mean many things. When you hear somebody with the same surname, it is natural to assume that they come from the same family. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we, that is you and I, should be called the sons and the daughters of God. We were adopted into the family of God. When we are adopted into a family, by the natural process is to also adopt the name of that family. So while my father might be Charles, and I was born in this small insignificant place, insignificant village in an insignificant town, while the name might be associated with that place, when I have accepted Jesus as my Lord, 
and I have been accepted into his family. Then I have also adopted the family name. So now wherever I go, I bear the name of Jesus, the name Christ as my family name. Before, if I had to walk anywhere, I would walk with my head down because I knew who I would be associated with. But now that I have met Jesus, and when Jesus being, have adopted me into his family, and when Jesus has made me a new creature, changed my whole being, now I don't walk with my head down anymore, but I walk with my head high because I have a new name. And that new name signifies a new identity. So when people ask me, who are you? Whose child are you? Whose son are you? I am able to say, I am the child of the king. I am the child of God, and, I am a, and God the Father is my father as well. I want to turn your attention just to illustrate to you. I'd like you to follow with me in the book of Numbers chapter 13. When we read the book of Numbers, we discover some very interesting reasons why names are changed. When you read the book of Numbers chapter 13, you will discover that the 12 names of the 12 tribes and a representative, a leader of each tribe is mentioned. When you read Numbers chapter 13 verse 1, the Lord speaks to Moses and in verse 2 the Lord tells him, Moses, here's your duty. Go and search the land and bring me 12 rulers of the 12 tribes of Israel. And when they had come to Moses, Moses had commissioned them to go into the wilderness to go and spy the land of Canaan. And here are the names given from verse 4 onwards. The Bible says, of the tribe of Reuben, Shamua, the son of Zakua. And you know, in this 34 years that I have existed on this earth, I am still to hear the name Shamua given to a child. If we come to the next one in verse 5, Shaphat. Verse 7, Igail. Verse 8, Oshea. Palti. I have never heard any of these names given to children simply because these names, while they are recorded in the Bible, the identity out of these names is not an exciting identity. When we read the Bible carefully, we discover in verse 16, to summarize all the names that were given, the Bible says, these are the names which Moses sent to spy out the land. But the Bible indexes that verse. The Bible says, and Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun. The Bible says, Moses changed the name of Oshea to Joshua. And I wondered within myself, why? Why did Moses change the name Oshea to Joshua? just before they could go to conquer and spy the land of Canaan. What was so significant about this name change? When I do a little more research, I discover that the name Joshua is a derivative of the name Jesus. And when the angel came to Mary, the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus signifies a, a saving, redemptive activity. The name Jesus means a savior. And when Moses was changing Oshea's name to Joshua, Moses was saying, Oshea, I want you to know, by changing your name today, I am sending you not as Oshea. So when you come back, you will see things that others are seeing, but you will see things much more than what others are seeing. Your destiny is being changed because your identity is being changed today. And we discover that when the men came back, you, when, when Moses began speaking to the Israelites, and when the 12 spies were giving their report, it was only two men who really said, let us go up immediately and possess the land. While the other ten said, no, we cannot. There are giants in the land. And we, in our own eyes, we were like grasshoppers. You know why? No parent keep their children's name, Shamua, Shaphat, Igail, 
or, or Palti or Gadiel, Gadi or Amniel. Because all these names represent men who were wimps, men who were not fearless, men who were crippled with fear and were not courageous like Caleb and Joshua. But up until today, parents still pride themselves in calling their children Joshua or Caleb because of who, what and whom their names signify. You see, our names to a certain extent, tell us who we should be. Th that is why in the Babylonian Empire, the ruling monarch decided to change the names of the three Hebrew boys and Daniel because he thought that in changing their names, he would in effect change their identity. And in changing their identity, he could in then change their destiny. In changing their names, giving them heathen names, the king was trying to change who they really were. But Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were related to someone much higher than their earthly parents. There is power in a name. And of all the names that I love the most in this world, and understandably so, I love the name Caroline. Now you might wonder why Caroline. Of all the names in the world, I love this name Caroline because Caroline is the name of my wife. And for 12 years, I've been living with this woman. For me, the most beautiful woman in the world. She is who, she is who God has destined to place in my part to assist me so that I can assist her. And together we have begun a journey, a process of becoming one as the Bible says. So the name Caroline is very dear to me because it represents my wife, that woman whom I hold in my arms every day and whom I miss sorely when I'm away from home. But as much as I love Caroline, my wife, as much as I long to be near her, as long as, as much as when I hear her name, her name sounds sweet, so sweet and melodious. There is another name who, which I love to hear, and that name is Jesus. There is no other name sweeter than the name of Jesus. And growing up as a young boy, poor, destitute, neglected, rejected in society, I have always wanted to make a name for myself. And I know it is a natural need, desire, urge within us to make a name for ourselves. And so in trying to make a name for ourselves, we succumb to various temptations and various snares of the devil. And let me tell you, right now, right here in the beginning, if you hear my name and you forget me, you have lost nothing. But if you hear the name of Jesus and you forget him, you have lost everything. There is something about the name Jesus. We love to hear our own name. You know what amazes me the most about some people? Tattooed on their arms, they would have their name engraved and tattooed. And I used to always wonder, why would a, a strapping young man want to tattoo his name on his shoulder or on his chest or on his back? Why would he stamp his own name on his body? There was a time I thought that his parents thought he was slow in learning, so they wanted to remind him of what his name was. But by nature, we love our names. Even up till today, while people tell me I need to humble myself, while people say, as a servant of God, God can use humble people, I still, when I hear the name Paul, it sounds so sweet to my ears. Because the name Paul, for me, is one of the most beautiful, most powerful names in the universe. Because it represents me. It identifies me. When you, when you visit schools and you see children writing on their desks and underneath their tables, 
you would discover among the things that they would write, they would inscribe their names. Because your name is important to you. I've heard it said so many times. The sweetest sound to a man is the sound of his own name. The most precious word in the dictionary would be your own name. And if your name is in the dictionary, that in itself is a great thing. But why would people tattoo themselves? Why would people graffiti on walls their own names if they did not love their names? I want, I want to read to you today from the book of Luke chapter 13, verse 35. The Bible says, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed, anointed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You see, no matter how precious our names might be, no matter how much we try to protect our names and shield our names, no matter how sweet our names may sound in our own ears, there is no other name blessed but the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 21, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible goes on to say in Romans 10 verse 13, Whosoever without exception, it does not matter where you come from, it does not matter what your past have been. It does not matter what your family connection might be. It does not matter how educated you might be. It matters not how wealthy you are. But if, if you call on the name that is above every other name, the Bible says, you will be saved. And when we walk into heaven one day, hallelujah, I long for the day when I will walk with Jesus. I long for the day when we will walk hand in hand, when we will sit at his feet, we will look into his eyes and hear with our own ears from the lips of the Savior words of joy and peace. One day when we cross over Jordan and go into glory land, I want you to remember, as you walk from this side of heaven into the other side of heaven, as you journey, as you trek from earth into heaven, there is only one name that's going to enter into heaven, and that name is Jesus. Every other name is going to be entrenched in that name because there's salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. So while we try to perpetuate our names and make our names great, while we struggle and strive to make our, to inscribe our names and let it run for eternity. If you want your names to last for eternity, let your names be inscribed in the heart of Jesus. Because access into heaven is only going to be through that name. Those who call upon the name of Jesus, the Bible says, will be saved. Only one name will enter into heaven. Everyone else will enter in through that name. And now for a few moments, I'd like us to contemplate on the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Colossians 3 verse 17, whatever you do, young people, whether it is at school or college or, or work, whatever your hand find to do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and through the Father. The Bible goes on to say when Jesus was commissioning his disciples in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, he says, go into the world and preach the gospel, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. But when you are baptizing them, baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, because there is power in that name. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a fortress. And those who take, fort take shelter in the name of Jesus, they find refuge, refuge from day to day. 
The book of Psalm chapter 20 verse 7 says, Some men trust in chariots, some men trust in horses, but we, we will put our trust in the name of the Lord. Now many people put their trust in the letters behind their name or in the money that is in the bank. But the Bible says we who put our trust in the name of the Lord will never be disappointed. The Bible says in Psalm 54 verse 1, the cry of the psalmist, save me, O God, save me, my Lord, save me by your name. There is life-saving power in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 118 verse 10, when I was compassed around by so many enemies, when I was surrounded by my enemies, I was terrified. And while I was in the middle of all this chaos, my trust has been in the name of the Lord, and he will destroy them. Oh yes, Psalm 124 verse, says, verse, verse 8 says, Our trust, our strength is only in the name of Jesus. The Bible goes on to, to give many examples of the power behind the name of Jesus. Therefore, the Bible says in the book of Psalm, let us praise the name of Jesus. Let us extol his glories through his name. Let us tell the nations around the name of Jesus because there is power in that name. And the Bible says in Isaiah 43 verse 7, everyone who is called by my name has been created for my glory. When Moses asked the Lord, Lord, when you... When you send me to Pharaoh, and when Pharaoh asks me, what is your name? What should I say, Lord? God told him, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, my name is, I am. Moses, my name will not change tomorrow. My name will not change in the years to come. But my name remains, I am, because I am unchangeable, and I will be who I want to be. With this name, Moses goes to Pharaoh. In Acts chapter 9 verse 5, when Saul was on the way to Damascus going to persecute Christians, struck down by the great light, and hearing the words of Jesus, Paul asked, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord from the heavens said, Saul, Saul, my name is Jesus, whom you persecute. There is power in that name. And then later on, the Bible says in the book of Galatians, God has chosen Paul to carry his name, the name Jesus, to the Gentiles. As you've heard, Romans 10 verse 13 says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Oh, my dear young person, I want, you to, tell, I want to tell you today that there is no sweeter name than Jesus. And Jesus is just the same as sweet as his name. My favorite story in the Bible is taken from the book of Acts chapter 3. Peter and John are on their way to the temple called Beautiful. And on the way, they meet a beggar with outstretched arms. He says, is there anyone who will help a beggar like me? Please give me a few coins. Peter and John, who had just had an experience with Jesus, they look at this man. They dig into their pockets. They have no coins to give this man. And let me tell you, young people, the name of Jesus is more powerful than any coin that may be in your pocket. The name of Jesus is more powerful than any bank account or name that we might possess. Peter turns to the man and says, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the Bible says, the man got up. He started walking and leaping and praising God. All because there is power in that name. The name Jesus above every other name. And there's going to come the time when at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is indeed Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Until that day, it is just our privilege 
to walk with God bearing that name. Now remember my childhood and the name that I carried, my family name. It signified nothing glorious. It signified nothing glamorous. And your name might also signify nothing glamorous or glorious. You're, you may not come from a powerful family. You may not have an influential family name that you can use. Your name might even be an embarrassment to you. But today, I want to tell you, dear young people, when you come to Jesus and you accept him as your Lord and as your Savior, and when you are adopted into his family, a name change takes place. And if you are experiencing challenges in your life, if you are experiencing traumatic experiences, walk in the name of Jesus. When David approached Goliath, Goliath told David, you come to me as a little boy today. I will feed your, your flesh to the birds of the air. David turns to Goliath in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. You come to me with a sword, with a shield, and with a spear. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. And when David sent that stone, he sent it in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Goliaths fall down. What is your Goliath today? Tackle it. In the name of Jesus. I have nothing to give you, young people. But I give you the name that is above every other name. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the name that is above every other name. We thank you, dear God, for choosing us to be part of your family. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that in spite of who we are, you have accepted us into your family so that we have a new identity. Lord, from the time we open our eyes now and until we open our eyes into glory land, may we walk in the strength that is only found in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, let that name quicken us as it quickened the lame beggar. Let that name bring giants down, Lord, as David brought down Goliath in your name. We pray this in the never-failing name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.